The Old Testament reading is found in Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 through 10, 13 through 14. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousands served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One, and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingdom is one that shall never be destroyed. Now finally, the New Testament reading is found in Revelation chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. Then I saw on the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And I saw between the throne and the four living creatures, and among the elders a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell before the lamb, each holding a harp and a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God. Saints from every tribe and language and people and nation, and you have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Thank you, Eric. This passage from the New Testament is going to be the passage that I'm going to preach on. And it is important because that what is written is the plan that God has even from before the world was created. He had that plan throughout eternity to be, to be fulfilled. And that plan is going to be unfolded in the end of this age when Jesus will come back. And the title of the message for today is the question that we just heard. Who is worthy, who is worthy to open this scroll? There was a big scroll and all the front part of the scroll, on the back, everything was written. That was the scroll which has God's plan that we are going to learn. Not only when we read the book of Revelation, but also when we see what is going on throughout the world, God's plan is going to come to the point of ultimate fulfillment. If God have never had that plan, 
in written form, maybe we would not have the opportunity to keep up with those words. Because what is written over here in the Bible is the plan of God for human beings. The plan of redemption for each and every one of us. So, we would forget along the centuries, we would forget, although in the beginning, uh, when the Old Testament was written, before the Old Testament was written, uh, the word which was passed on to the other generations was a kind of tradition. Later on, those words were written and they are part of the Bible because God wanted us not to forget about his plan, not to forget about what is written. So, now, if we think about what is written in verse 1 of Revelation 5, John says, I saw a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals. Wow. It wasn't common to have a scroll, if you notice that. It, it was not common to write on both sides of the scroll. Usually, it is what is written is inside, and when we have that row, we cannot see what is written. But that specific row, which God uh, let John to see, in that revelation, that scroll was written on both sides. And that was because God had a purpose. Also, why the scroll was sealed? Why that? It is because certain information written in that scroll was not for the sake of people to be reading those words. It was not supposed that people would be reading everything that was read, uh, which was written in that scroll. Why that? God's plan is His plan. Some things which are written in the Bible, we understand that. We were talking about that this morning. But some other things, we cannot keep asking why as well as we cannot ask God why that scroll had a lot of things written in both sides. So what was written? What, is kind, what kind of speculation scholars uh, tried to do in terms of finding out what was written in that scroll? Many different ide ideas came out of the scholars' studies, and one of them is that God kept a book in which the history of the universe is put down there. And it is for sure that as God wrote this, the history of the universe, we in our lives are already also written as part of his plan of redemption. God created everything that we know about for us human beings and for his pleasure. So we are part of that history. We are part of that which is written in such a book, such a scroll. And it is obvious also that God wants us not to forget about what is written in the Bible. And the issue there was, who is able to open up the book? That was the question. Who is able or who was able to open up that book? In the Old Testament, the phrase opening the books refers to the time of the final judgment. When we find out in the Old Testament that word, open the books, 
that is something addressed to the final judgment. And Daniel is clear about that in verse in, in chapter 7, he talks and he refers to the heavenly court. There will be a day when the, the final judgment will be there and people are going to be present. And Jesus is going to be there to present to the Father the ones who belong to him. That is also part of the plan. So this passage is John's vision about how God's plan will unfold after the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I was wondering why so many details are written in that book. Some of those things we can't understand are symbols, are uh, all those kinds of things like uh, God's seven spirits and seven uh, bowls and all those images which are in the book of Revelation are there on a purpose. One day, if we have the opportunity to have a specific Bible study on the book of Revelation, we can go through that. But today, what I'm going to explore in this uh, sermon is something special, something addressed to each and every one of us. Each day of our lives is written in the book of life. That is the book which has our step-by-step -step life journey. Each and every one of those days of our, our lives are already written. Why that? God knows everything. He knows from the beginning. Even when we were not here yet, He knew how we would react to his word, to his commandments. And that is important for us to be aware that everything that is going to take place, everything that has already taken place in our lives, God is all aware of that. In my opinion, I am convinced that God is the God of history. God is the one who knows the right time to have everything in place. When he sent his son, he sent Jesus at the right time because the Roman Empire was already unified. Everything was ready for Jesus to come and to let the word be spread throughout the known world back then. That is important for us to know. As far as God sent Jesus Christ at the right time, because everything was settled to receive Jesus Christ. As far as God did not allow Jesus to be here on earth for more than that expected lifetime, about 33 years of life that he accomplished here to spread the plan and to spread the word and to talk about the gospel. That was God who established that time. No, no days are going to be saved in our lives because we are word with something. On the contrary, the Bible says that if we are word with something, we may be stressed without any necessity because what concerns and worry and stress brings to us is just to let our life not be enjoyable and our life be shorter than it is supposed to be. But God is in control, not only of history, but in control of our lives. This is why he emphasizes what is the purpose for what we were created. And how John reacted when he wrote down those letters when he saw what God told him, when he heard and saw those images from heaven. What was written? No one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. That is written. 
But John reacted as a human being. He reacted in the way that he did not understand why all of those things were taking place. When John saw that sealed book, he wept. He wept loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. That was his reaction. Maybe Peter would react differently. Maybe we would react differently as we read the book of Revelation. But what is scared John was that word no one in heaven or on earth was able to open up the scroll or to look into it. As frail human beings, John and we all, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the empowerment of God to believe that eternal life, as well as everything that is that is written in this book is going to happen. We need the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Paul has said that spiritual things are discerned by the Spirit. We are unable to understand the spiritual things. And John was unable to understand why the scroll was sealed. He wanted it, probably he wanted to see his name written in that book. Maybe he was anxious to see and to make sure if he was saved or not. <coughs> Human beings, as we go through some struggles, sometimes we think and we doubt whether or not we are saved. I have heard Mature people talking about that question. I'm not sure that I'm saved. But it is not because of what we do or we are doing good or bad. We are saved because of what is written over here. What is written in the Bible, what is written in the book of Revelation, all about the future of our eternal life in heaven, that is going to happen because it is God's word. God is faithful. He never takes us with surprises. He wants us to be aware of what is going to take place in the future. Although we are frail human beings, we must believe that not because we understand the whole plan, but because we accept those things by faith. So maybe John wasn't sure yet about his future. Why it was so important for John to see the book open, not sealed, but open, maybe it was because he wanted to know what, is, what was not allowed him back then to be aware of. But God is so good that he used John, the one who did not understand that revelation, to let us to count on the book of Revelation today. Doesn't matter what was John's reaction. What matters is that Jesus used him to let us be aware of our future. So maybe also John was shocked because he wanted somebody who could be trustful to open the book. When he heard those words, no one in heaven or on earth is able to open the book. Wow, I imagine how he was thinking. If no one is able to open the book, how can I, how can I see what is going to be the future? And maybe he was also afraid of missing the privilege to read what was written, what was written. And he was the first one to read that because God put him in charge of putting those notes down. So, actually, 
what should be his concern? What should be our concern? We all, and John, should not have concern about what is written. Why that? Because in chapter 3, 5 was explained who is going to be in charge of opening up the book. Chapter 3, verse 5 says, the one who conquers will be clothed in white garments and I, Jesus said, I will never blot his name out of the book of life. This is a promise. He said, I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name or her name before my father and before his angels. That is the promise that we have. As far as we persist, as far as we persevere to the end as it is written, we have that promise from the Lord. He's never going to have our name out of that book. So that John should not have that concern. And that will happen at the very day of the final judgment. That will happen up there when Jesus is going to come up with his people, his children, the one who believed in him while they were here on earth is going to come to the Father and tell, Father, these are mine, so that we have not to be worried with our future, because it is guaranteed in heaven. Jesus had done everything that was necessary for, for us to have that assurance to each and every one of us. But out there, many people still doubt if they are saved or not. Uh, I heard a comment from somebody who said, many people out there, the ones who are apart from God, they do not want to come to church because they think they are already condemned. They think they have no chance. And that is a good excuse from Satan to put in people's minds that they have no chance anymore. Because this is not why Jesus died hanging on the cross. He did that to rescue each and every one of us who need to be rescued. And those people out there who are thinking they are already condemned, they need our help. The Church of Jesus Christ is here to help them to understand that God loves them and they have still opportunity to be living with God forever. This is why Sandy has been proposing those programs. They are really good. I encourage all of you who are able to come to take a look and see what it's all about. We are going to start up some of those programs which go along with the divorce here because all of those programs are addressed to the people who are not aware how God loves them, the ones who are feeling they have no more chance. This is what the Church of Christ is in charge of. We are the Church of Christ. So when we pray and ask the Lord to give us discernment and ask the Lord to give us that kind of willingness, to be involved in those kinds of things. That is very important because we need God's perception. We need His mind. We need to be part of Christ's mind as it is written to understand how important is our role in this world. So actually, 
what is going to take place when God has his church doing that. I'm sure that Jesus is going to accomplish his promises. And we are going to have the opportunity to tell people what is their future. Jesus saved us, not only for us to take advantage of salvation, but to pass on to other people what the benefits of salvation are. And because he is the only one who has power to rescue those people as he rescued us, because he is the only one, everything that we are going to be doing over here in this church, everything that you are going to keep doing in the future has to be focused on what is God's main purpose to humanity. So Jesus earned the right to do that. He earned the right to save us. He earned the right to be our savior because of what he did on the cross. When we pray, when we talk to Jesus, we should be doing that, and we are doing that in Jesus' name, not in our own name, because that is where the power of God comes from. So he is the only one. He alone is able to encourage us and to lift his church up to accomplish what his purpose is. And he is worthy of all our worship. This is what we just heard when Eric uh, read that passage. And Jesus took the scroll in his hands. And when he did that, what happened on, uh, up there? What the angels were doing? What the heavenly hell was doing? They were worshiping the Lord. And in verse 9, it is clear. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain. And with the blood of your death, you bought people for God from every tribe, every language, and people from all the nations. That is the context. That is the, the church of the the, the, the last time, the church which honors Jesus Christ, reaching out to people from all languages, all tribes, and people of all nations. So that is what we are looking forward to see that kind of worship, that kind of uh, 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 people and angels, and we all singing together to worship the Lord. And what is finally written in verses 13 and 14. I can read it again. Worthy is the Lamb that was his name to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And every created thing which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all things in them, I, John said, I heard them say, saying to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. And what the people, what the creatures which were there, what they, how they did respond. And the four living creatures kept saying, Amen. And the elders fell down and worship. What is the best thing we can do? What we are going to do right now to finish up this time together? We are going to sing a song of worship, which is addressed to the opportunity that we have this morning. The opportunity that we have right now. The opportunity that we have all the days of our life when we wake up, when we go back to, to bed, is the 
privilege and the opportunity to keep singing those songs and to keep using our lives to worship the Lord with our actions, with our attitude, so that it's going to be good. God is going to be happy if we spend our lives doing that. So let us practice that right now for the future. Let us sing the song, which is, O oh Lord, your beauty.